Hi, this is Dr. Raj Kannan, Director of Aptor Institute and a Chronic Pain Specialist from Chandra Rheumatology and Immunology Hospital. Today, this video is about the differences between inflammatory and the non-inflammatory form of arthritis. Oftentimes, as a doctor, you get patients coming to you with joint pain and it's our job to discern whether the joint pain is coming from an inflammatory source or a non-inflammatory mechanical source. So, let me chart out one by one. Uh, in the inflammatory arthritis, uh, the conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, psoriatic arthritis, they all come under the inflammatory joint pain categories. Whereas the non-inflammatory, otherwise called as mechanical type of arthritis, uh, will affect the weight bearing joints. For example, the arth osteoarthritis of the hip joint, osteoarthritis of the knee joint. So they are the classic examples of non-inflammatory mechanical form of arthritis. Uh, because it's an inflammatory arthritis, it's actually an, a systemic problem. It's a systemic problem which causes secondary inflammation in the joint. In the non-inflammatory arthritis, it's a local phenomena. Let's say when someone has an abnormal alignment of the knee joint bones, uh, example like genuvarum or genuvalgum, in such cases, the weight-bearing line of gravity will not be appropriate. Uh, there will be a deformity in the joint which causes secondary eroding of the cartilage that in turn causes pain in the joint. So, this is usually as a result of poor loading or a bad biomechanical alignment in the joint that causes local biomechanical related joint arthritic pains okay and uh, in inflammatory arthritis because it's a systemic uh, you will have the abnormal elevation of esr and crp sometimes you go for a further testing then you will get a ra positive or a hlab 27 or ana anti ccp these are the other high levels of testing that you have to go on to in order to confirm the diagnosis these blood tests are usually negative or very low in non inflammatory arthritis Maybe uh, in uh, extreme case of osteoarthritis, ESR may be slightly elevated, but it won't be skyrocketing like how you see in the inflammatory form of arthritis. So, if you see uh, osteoarthritis with a slight ESR elevated, um, then that is not usually a problem as long as the other parameters are normal. Um, the inflammatory arthritis, because the inflammatory arthritis being a systemic problem, it does not consider the sites. So, you will get both uh, right and the left side oftentimes involved. Inflammatory arthritis. The problems are usually symmetrical in nature because the bodily inflammation being a systemic problem, it will not consider the site. So, it can affect both the sites. I typically, these people will have pain on both the fingers, both the sides of the fingers, pain on both the jaws, sometimes pain on the both the knee. So, uh, whenever the problem is symmetrical in nature, uh, we actually will think of either systemic problem or sometimes a spinal problem. So, in this case, uh, in conditions like example, RA, uh, you usually get pain on both the sides whereas osteoarthritis you get pain usually one side more than the other side sometimes only one side absolutely no pain in the other side so it's usually because of the abnormal load related biomechanical problem so it is not necessarily true that it should affect both the sides symmetrically same time okay uh, and uh, the inflammatory arthritis can affect the non weight bearing joints as well uh, whereas the non inflammatory arthritis like mechanical arthritis it will always look for a weight bearing joint what are the weight bearing joints the knee joint and the hip joints so they are the one which will be easily undergoing the wear and tear because of the load factor hence uh, the knee joint and hip joint are more commonly involved in the non-mechanical type of uh, non-inflammatory type of uh, joint pains or the arthritis whereas uh, the systemic problem uh, will not consider the weight bearing non-weight bearing joint so it can affect even the jaw joint it can affect the atlanta occipital joint uh, it can affect the elbow joint so the inflammatory type of arthritis can affect the non-weight bearing joints as well uh, if you see the morning stiffness, uh, in usually in inflammatory joint pains, the morning stiffness will be extremely high. Uh, it will be up to almost 60 minutes or beyond that. Whereas in the non-inflammatory type, the morning stiffness will not be as severe as you see in the inflammatory, inflammatory arthritis. So, if the morning stiffness is less than uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, then uh, it can be classified as a non-inflammatory type. If the morning stiffness is almost like 60 minutes to beyond that, then it's coming under the inflammatory category. And then activities uh, make the inflammatory arthritis pain better because when they start moving, the joint inflammatory soup will get dispersed uh, out of the particular vicinity. Hence, they find it free enough as they continue to move. In other words, movements make them better in this group. In this group, movements make them worse because it's a load related weight bearing problem. Uh, when you start in the day, the pain will be less. As you load and load the joint, by the end of the day, the pain will get worse. So, when the pain is getting worse as you load it, as the joint is keep on getting used, then the pain will be more. So, that will be the uh, non-inflammatory type of uh, arthritis. 
So apart from that, the inflammatory arthritis, uh, it will have an extra joint manifestation. So it's not necessarily the pain should be only in the joint. Sometimes they'll have other systemic manifestations like uh, weight loss, uh, night sweats, fever and other um, gastrointestinal problem and other uh, systemic problem. Whereas in the mechanical type of arthritis, you won't get any other extra articular manifestation. You'll have only pain in the joint, swelling in the joint, tenderness in the joint, but you, it will not go to the other systems. No extra articular manifestation in the mechanical type, uh, whereas usually there will be an extra articular manifestation in the inflammatory type. The deformities can happen very frequently in the inflammatory category because uh, some of the patients, they will ignore their inflammatory pain and then they keep on um, doing some uh, wrong treatment or they wait and watch. And the, and the inflammation will gradually erode the joint and then they quickly get into the state of deformity uh, and such deformities will be very massive in the inflammatory type category whereas the deformities will be gradually progressing in the uh, osteoarthritic or the mechanical type category. So if you see the patients who are having genuvalgum and varum in this category, they will be acquiring the deformity over a period of time. Say for example, for about 10 years to 15 years, it will take to get the grass deformity here whereas here the deformity can happen within a span of 2 to 3 years or sometimes within uh, one in one and a half years, they can get the deformity very fast. So, in inflammatory arthritis, the deformity can rapidly progress, whereas in the non-inflammatory type, the deformity will be progressing gradually. Age is a primary criteria here because uh, in inflammatory arthritis, even young people get arthritis. Like for example, there is something called juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, where uh, kids as young as five years or six years, they will get arthritis. Whereas when you come to the mechanical type of arthritic uh, category, uh, only old people get it because the joint is uh, getting wear and tear more during the uh, old age, not during the young age. So if you happen to see someone who is young, who is having uh, joint pain, uh, then you can quickly think of inflammatory joint pain category. Or if you see a old guy like 60 year, 60 year old man coming to you with a hip pain, then it is more likely to be a uh, mechanical type of uh, uh, joint arthritis. So these are the some of the uh, uh, points that you need to understand when you are treating patients to discern uh, whether inflammatory category and the non-inflammatory category. That completes the discussion of the difference between inflammatory and the non-inflammatory arthritis. I hope this video is helpful to you. Thank you.